Hey, I'm Julie, Faye Fan Balzer, and you may or may not know that Brother comes out with all sorts of different design collections each year. And one of the ones that I'm really excited about is the Rhinestone Collection. And the reason I'm excited about it is because it's not just a regular series of Rhinestone designs. These are designs that actually combine cutting shapes out of maybe HTV or fabric with fusible, something like that, with Rhinestone. So let's check it out. So I'm here in Canvas Workspace Online, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on the tab that says Pattern Collection. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different choices. So I'm gonna scroll down until I see Rhinestone Design Collection. Now the first thing I wanna bring your attention to is this unlock, right? It's a little lock that's unlocked. Now that is because once you have purchased the design collection from a brother dealer, there's a code on the back of the card that you buy, and you you scratch it off and you enter it in your profile in Canvas Workspace Online and that unlocks the collection. So anywhere that you see a lock, for instance here on Design Collection 1, you can contact a brother dealer in order to buy that particular collection. If you're curious what's in a collection, you can click on Show All and you can see it will show you exactly what is in there. Now, if you have unlocked the collection, then instead of clicking on show all, you'll click on the actual um, image. And once you click on that, you'll see that it will go ahead and open up all the files for you. Now, aren't these cool? These are designs, again, that combine rhinestones with either HTV or fabric or something that you're going to cut out and fuse down. So there's a wide variety of different designs. I like some of these sort of freestanding ones here. The bracelet ones are really cool. I can totally see Christmas ornaments. Frankly, I wear really big earrings. I can even see making earrings out of these ones. And I think these will all be great on t-shirts. You can see how this follows like a neckline. Really, really cool stuff. So, so for today, I thought that I would make this cactus because it seems like well, I can't say any other word to describe it. It seems really cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And you'll see that I have three different artboards here. So I have sort of the green lines plus the red flower. Then I have two outlines of the cactus. And I wasn't sure what the two outlines were for. And it turns out that if you wanted to make this an ornament or something that was sort of freestanding and not attached to anything, you'd wanna be able to put a backing on it. So there's one for the front and one for the back. Today, I'm gonna to put it on a t-shirt, so I only really need one of them, but that's good to know. And then finally, you have the rhinestones. Now. It is not recommended for you to resize this in any way because obviously the rhinestone design can't be resized because that is set to the size of the rhinestone. So you have to sort of be happy with how it is. So I am going to go ahead and um, use these icons. And if you're not familiar with them, so this is the edit or import parts icon. And this is the download parts icon. So I don't need to do any editing. I'm just gonna go ahead and send this on over to the machine. And you can start with any part. It doesn't really matter which part you start with. For some reason, I want to start with the middle part, probably because it's the base of it. But again, you can start with any of them. And if you wanted to download all the parts at once as a zip file, you can go ahead and use this big button right here. So I'm gonna do them individually. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this center one. I'm going to transfer it wirelessly to my scan and cut. And just like that, it's ready. So let me go grab it. From the home screen, I'm going to choose retrieve data, wireless, and there are my two cactuses, cacti. Uh, I only need one of them. And you'll notice that they're reversed from each other. So one of the things to make note of when you look at the screen is to see which one is the one that is actually gonna work for this design. So if I look at the screen, I can see that the tall arm is on the right side, okay? So this is the reverse one. However, since we're cutting it out of HTV or fabric with fusible, it needs to be reversed. 
So this is actually the correct one. I know that seems a little bit confusing, but trust me, you want to get rid of this one. So I'm going to choose edit, delete, there it is. And then let me go ahead and scan in my material. So I can see my material on the screen and I can drag my cactus to the proper place so that it cuts. Now this happens to be a piece of fabric with fusible on it. But again, if you were cutting HTV, you would cut it the same way because it would be good side down and it would have the fusible side up. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, please select cut. And then all I need to do is press start. Here is my cactus shape and I'm ready to cut out the next part. Okay, so now I'm ready to download the second part and I'm just gonna repeat the same process of transferring it over. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the next file and scan in my material once more. As I mentioned, these designs are already mirror image, so all I need to do is simply place my pieces onto my fabric or my heat transfer vinyl. I like to use my fabric multiple times, so I'll drag things as close as possible to the edge. As you can see, I've cut many things out of this piece before. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, okay, please select, cut. And again, with the auto blade, I don't need to make any choice other than to press start. So one of the negatives of cutting this out of fabric instead of HTV is there's no carrier sheet. So I'm going to keep this um, cutout piece as a template to be able to use to properly place these pieces later. And now it is time for us to cut our rhinestones. So I'm gonna repeat the same process. I'm just going to download it and transfer it on over. So I'm gonna to go to retrieve data, wireless, and there are my rhinestones. So I'm gonna scan in my material once more. And I am using the black flocked rhinestone material from the rhinestone starter kit. That's really important in order to create my rhinestone template. If you'd like to learn more about cutting rhinestones, please check out my video all about it. So I'm going to place my design onto my material, maybe up here. I'm going to say, okay, please select, cut. Now I want to change to a half cut. And I happen to have the cut pressure set at two because that's what worked for me previously. So we'll see if it works, but the default is auto. So I'm gonna try it again at two and we'll see how that goes. Test. And then I wanna drag that test cut down into the corner and press start. Without unloading the mat, I want to check to see if it cut all the way through. It didn't, that's great. But now I need to check to see if it cut all the way through the flocked material and it did, that triangle came right out. So I know my settings are correct. Since my settings are correct, I can go ahead and press start. If they weren't, I would adjust the settings and press test again. Now it's time to weed this design. So my goal is to pull out all of these little circles. It can help to sort of angle the flocked paper to see if there are any cuts left. And it's okay if you miss some. Once you think you've gotten them all, I'm just gonna trim this piece down. 
So I have my rhinestone board and I'm going to peel this yellow paper off. And then usually if there are any holes left, you can see it from the back. Like I can see that I missed one right there. But I think that is it. So I'm going to put this, what is essentially a big sticker, down on my rhinestone board. And now I need to figure out what size rhinestone is it that's going to fit in here. I like to store my rhinestones in these little bead containers, and I do write the color and the size on top on the lid. I also need to think what color I want these to be because these are in lots of different colors. I think because the flower is yellow, I might see if the size 10 yellow ones fit. So I'm just going to open the container and drop one. It seems a little bit small, but it certainly fits in. Let's see some of these are all size 10 in here. So let's see one of my bigger ones. Does it take a 16? Mm, so the 16 is too big. Okay. And I don't have anything in between. So we are going to go with the size 10s. So all I do is, this is very technical, dump my rhinestones on top here. Then I take this beautiful magic brush that comes in the rhinestone starter kit. And I brush it in circles. And you can see that the rhinestones for the most part are now all facing the correct way in their little holes, except for one. I can use my finger to try to inch a rhinestone over, or I can use this tool that comes with the rhinestone starter kit to pick one up and drop it in place. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a carrier sheet. This is another thing that comes in your rhinestone starter kit, and you can of course buy refills too. Oopsies, did you see how this stone like leapt on and it was attracted to it? Maybe I should brush away some of these excess stones to give myself a little more space. So one of the reasons I'm doing this in the box top is so that the rhinestones can just get brushed away and poured back into their container. Okay. So now I'm going to place this down. And I'm going to press pull up the sheet and the rhinestones come with it in the exact formation they need to be in. This is completely reusable, so I can use this many, many times as often as I want. And I can use this as long as it keeps it stick. But let's head on over to the heat press. So I'm using a heat press because I have one. You could certainly do this with an iron, but I'm simply going to do a quick tack down of the first layer. Now I set my temperature for 305 degrees and 10 seconds, but you should do whatever the manufacturer of your fusible web or heat transfer vinyl says. So now we have to put on the next layer, which is a little more complicated. Okay, so I would probably do this in the press, but that's just really hard to photograph. So here is my flower. And you can see I can just put it right there, and that seems fine. Then I'm basically going to use this piece of fabric as a stencil so that I can easily figure it out. Now, it doesn't really need to be this exact. You could also just eyeball it. And obviously, if you used HTV, it would have had a transfer sheet and you wouldn't have to do this at all. So this is just because I didn't have any green HTV, so I planned to use fabric. 
Okay, so now as carefully as humanly possible, I'm going to move this over to the press. So far, so good. I'm taking my rhinestones and laying them right over my design. I can see through the sheet. So I can see exactly what it's gonna look like. And I can make even the smallest of adjustments. Once I'm satisfied, I'm gonna go ahead and place my fabric on over it. You could also use parchment paper or a Teflon sheet. And then I'm gonna close the press. You do need to wait for the t-shirt to cool before you can peel off that sheet. So let's wait a minute. And I can reuse this transfer sheet as long as the stickiness stays. So I'll put this back in the box. So how cute is my finished little t-shirt design? I love that. I hope that you will give this a try. Thanks so much for watching. For more tips, tricks, and tutorials, please visit my blog at balzerdesigns.typepad.com. I do teach live online scan and cut classes, and you can find those at juliebalzer.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, don't forget about the scan and cut website at scanandcut.com. <laughs>